Coming in at number 5 we have boiling water. This post came from a reddit user 6 years ago. In his post he explained how he passed away, visited hell and then was brought back to life. It all started in the summer of 2003. He was visiting his cousin when they went to visit his friends house. His friends who were two sisters named Erica and Angela had a pool at their house and they decided this would be a great way to enjoy the day. The guy couldn't swim but he didn't want to tell anyone this and risk being humiliated in front of the girls so he instead decided he would stay to the shallow end of the pool. It was all going well, they were enjoying the day and his inability to swim hadn't been obvious up to this point. When the sisters went inside to get them something to eat his cousin suggested they play volleyball in the pool. They didn't have a net but they made it work. They were both enjoying the game until his cousin hit the ball at a weird angle and he dove to catch it. Suddenly he felt the incline of the pool and slipped under the water. He felt himself fall further and further until he couldn't keep his head above the water. He heard his cousin screaming as he fell under for the last time. He knew his cousin wouldn't be able to pull his weight alone. The next thing he knew he was sat at what appeared to be a desk in a white room that seemed to be endless. He could hear voices all around him but none speaking English so he didn't know what they were saying. Suddenly the desk disappeared and the room went dark. A man appeared before him dressed in a suit with pearly white teeth and an unsettling smile. As he approached him the guy asked where am I? The man still smiling answered oh you'll figure that out. Bad luck with the pool I see. At that moment the guy realised he was floating in water. It was so still he hadn't even noticed. The man was standing above the water looking down on the guy when he asked am I dead are you God? He explained he was not, he was just going to watch him swim for a while. He realised he suddenly knew how to swim, he felt free and enjoyed it, he was laughing and loving the experience until suddenly the water got hotter kept getting hotter and hotter until it was boiling. The man had disappeared but he could hear him laughing. He said the water was throwing him around as it boiled hotter and hotter. It felt like it went on for years. He was begging for it to stop or for any small relief from the pain. It felt like eons had passed. Suddenly he began to raise higher in the water and felt pain in his chest. He began to cough and felt a surge of water leave his lungs. It was a relief. His vision was blurry and he did not recognise the man standing above him. He thought he was in a new hell until he saw his cousin with tears in his eyes looking over him. He was back. They explained his heart had stopped for three minutes. He said this still haunts his mind. Those three minutes felt like an eternity. Coming in at number four we have Second Chance. A woman who goes by Stephanie tells her story of how she believes she was given a second chance in her life. She had a near death experience. As she was passing away she recalls seeing her entire life flash before her eyes. She felt like she was falling backwards for an eternity. She saw every mistake she had ever made. She was then taken to a nightmarish landscape. She believed it was hell. She said she fell until she was in the city where she grew up but it looked as though it had been destroyed by something. She had an overwhelming fear that she was in the presence of evil. She had been shown her mistake and what awaited her. She was then suddenly thrown back into her body. She felt grateful to be alive. She had been shown what would happen to her if she didn't change her life. She thinks this was a warning of where she would spend eternity if she didn't. To be honest, I'm going to hell. Coming in at number 3 we have Hellfire. The author of Hope Stewart wrote a book about her experience visiting hell. She also explained in her book steps to follow if you never want to experience it yourself. It goes against everything I just said. She claims to have visited hell twice within the space of 2 years. It seems that she believes she was taken there as a way of getting her to teach the world to avoid the experience. She said it happened while she was asleep, like she was being allowed to visit while in a dream state. There was no night or day at a time at all, it was in a time of its own. She said the landscape looked like a million jumbo jets crashed into one place. She said the scene was incredible, beyond anything anyone could imagine. The people there had nowhere to go, they all had to be here. Everyone there was in the same position, wailing and screaming, weeping for help but none was given. She commented on how everyone there was equal, no one had fancy cars or big houses or money. They all just burned in the same way. She said it was the saddest thing she had ever witnessed. It was heart wrenching and she would do anything to make sure people don't have to experience this. She now wants to bring awareness to this and to stop anyone from living in a way where they might end up there. In at number 2 we have near death experience. Most visits to hell come from a near death experience and this one is no different. Kim revealed that her NDE happened 30 years ago but she can remember it clearer than any other memory in her life. It made her change her life dramatically and live better. Kim went into a 4 day coma after she made some bad choices with her life. She woke up as she reached the doorsteps of hell. She said that she could hear the screams of the devil from inside 
outside the gates. She said that the smell in the air was rancid at best, it smelled like burning flesh of some kind. Suddenly she was unable to move, she felt claws and teeth attaching to all parts of her body. The pain was unimaginable but it wouldn't stop. She couldn't scream or get away, she could see her arms and legs being pulled away but the experience felt endless. It was as if the pain was on a loop, her arms would be pulled off again and again. As the suffering went beyond limits she suddenly came back to life. She was finally resuscitated after 4 days of attempts from the doctors. Many doctors insist that she cannot have experienced what she says but she'll never forget the pain. And finally in at number 1 we have Glimpse of Hell. A woman named Jacqueline shared her story of when she thinks she visited hell. She titled it, I think I've seen a glimpse of hell and I think it saw me too. Creepy. She explained that her day started as normal as any other. She said every day she would ride her bike to visit her father at work. Her mother would tell her to be careful as the road they lived on was known for being dangerous. She had to cross four lanes of traffic to get over the road. It didn't bother her, she did it every day. This day when she pulled out to cross the road everything went black. The last thing she heard was her mother screaming. She always watched from the front porch. She heard the squeak of tires and car horns. She felt a horrible pain down the left side of her body. The next thing she knew everything Everything went dark and quiet like she was sleeping. Then she woke up but she wasn't in the world she knew. It appeared like she was on the same street, in the same town. Everything looked abandoned. The world felt completely silent. The trees looked dead and the sky was burnt orange colour. Not knowing what to do she ran home. Her head hurt and her stomach felt twisted. When she got home her lunch was still on the table but it was rotten. She heard something upstairs coming from her mother's room. She ran upstairs looking for the comfort of her mother. As she got to the door she froze. The door was not fully open but she could see the thing imitating her mother on the bed. It was moving around like a puppet, jerking back and forth. It looked like it was part of her mother, part of something else. The floorboard beneath her creaked, so the thing turned to look at her and the door began to open. All of a sudden she was pulled back and she woke up actually woke up in a hospital bed. Her mother was beside her as she woke up crying and explaining what had happened. She said that the doctors brought her back, it was a miracle. She should have succumbed to her injury. She had a fracture in her neck and a spinal injury. She didn't tell anyone what she saw, she thought it must be a hallucination but there was one problem, she saw the creature again. She started to see it frequently, first it started far away on bridges or inside buildings but it got closer and closer until it would be stood behind her. If she moved to look at it, it would disappear. Appear. The worst part was it was always people she knew and loved, her mother, father, siblings. She was even scared of real people. She doesn't know where she went but she thinks it was hell or her version of it. The creature saw her and it hadn't let her go since. It's like she was never meant to wake up. Coming in at number 5 we have 23 minutes. Bill Weiss who is now an author had a life changing experience in November of 1998. It changed the course of his life and career forever. Bill is a devout Christian and believes in both heaven and hell. In an event that he compares to that of a dream, he described the experience of being plunged into hell. He said he felt like he was falling down a long tunnel. He was falling for what felt like an eternity of time. Finally he hit a solid floor. When he looked around he realised he was in a dark dirty prison cell. He said people often wonder if hell is hot or cold. From his experience he felt such an intense heat that seemed far too hot for life to even survive. When looking around the prison cell he had been dropped into he realised there were two large creatures creatures in there with him. While he was there he witnessed other prisoners being pulled from their cell to be put through unimaginable pain. He could hear screaming from all directions, foul odours from beasts around him and raging pits of fire. He said after what felt like eons being trapped there he saw a bright light above him. He then felt himself rising up and out of the tunnel he had fallen through to land here. Following his vision Bill believed it was his life calling to share his experience with the rest of the world. After spreading his message as much as he was able he wrote the book 23 minutes in hell. What felt like eons for him to experience was only 23 minutes once he was back in his mortal body. He will never forget his experience and hopes he will never be back there ever again. Coming in at number 4 we have near death experience. Kenneth Hagen was born and raised in a family who followed Christian beliefs. When he was 15 he had a terrifying experience that led him to dedicate his life to the Lord and become a reverend. Kenneth suffered from a chronic heart condition and when he was 15 his heart stopped beating. He recalled a 
numbness spreading throughout his entire body. He then began to descend down. He was going further and further down as if he was going deeper and deeper into a dark cave or well. There was no light around him as he descended. He said he looked up and could see the lights of the earth, but they were completely out of reach. They too faded away until he was completely surrounded by darkness. The darkness was unlike anything he had ever seen before. As he got further and further down, he came across great flames of fire. For a moment, he even felt relieved to be out of the complete darkness, but this feeling didn't last long. He then started to feel the heat. It got hotter and hotter, and he felt as though he could not breathe. It was so unbearable. Some demonic creatures noticed his presence and began to approach him. Fortunately for him, the doctors were able to save him from this hell. They restarted his heart, and he felt his soul return to his body. Since then, he served God. He now works as a pastor to spread the word of the horrors that he witnessed. Coming in at number 3, we have 27 days. Matthew Botsford, unlike the others mentioned, was someone who didn't believe in religion or followed any faith or God. He had a horrific accident and was put into a medically induced coma to save his life, following him being involved in a shooting. When Matthew did finally recover, he told the story of what he had experienced while in his coma. He said the second he heard the bang, he felt utter darkness. He then felt like he was in a void. He tried to scream, but he realized that he couldn't. He felt incredible fear, but there was nothing he could do to break free from the invisible hold that had come over him. He said he believed that it was hell. It was beyond anything he could describe. He suddenly felt like he was dropped from that hold and he started to fall a great distance. As he fell, he got faster and faster. He knew if he was to hit anything at this speed, it would be fatal. Still not understanding where he was or what was going on, his brain scrambled for ideas but nothing came to him. He hit solid ground but he didn't feel pain that he had expected. He got up on his feet waiting for whatever would happen to him next. He began to run in any direction he could in the dark void room he had fallen into. Suddenly he saw a creature in the distance. He said it was tall, with no features on its face. It looked like what he could only imagine was a demon. He ran in fear, but no matter where he turned, there it was, walking towards him, getting closer and closer. Finally, it reached him. Frozen in fear, all he could do now was look into the creature's void face as it reached out to touch him. The moment before it touched him, he felt a tightness in his chest and he woke up. He said the experience was more vivid than any dream he had ever had. He had experienced things he didn't believe his brain was able to create on its own. He was shocked to learn he had been in a coma for 27 days. It felt like he was in that place for a year, but only minutes at the same time. He said he'll never forget this horrifying experience. Coming in at number 2, we have Ghost. Howard Stern had been a devout atheist for most of his life until he had an experience that changed his mind and opened him up to the belief that something else was out there. At the age of 38, he suffered a perforated stomach. This caused him to have a near-death experience. He crashed in the hospital and the next thing he knew he was stood next to his hospital bed. He could see his family and the doctors around him trying to save his life, but as he spoke to them no one could hear him. When he tried to grab them, his hand fell right through. He was starting to panic and fell back not knowing what to do. Then he saw a group of people at the door to his room. They were calling him over. Shocked that these people could see him, he walked over. They smiled and told him to follow them. As soon as he passed the doorway, he was surrounded by a thick fog. The people began to walk further and further down what was the hallway. He followed them. As he walked, he could see his room in the distance as it got further and further away. The people were being joyful and friendly as they told him to follow. This gave him hope that they were trustworthy. Trust no one. As they got further and further away from his room, their attitude began to change. They started to push and shove. The next thing he knew, their faces had completely changed. They looked demonic. They began to feast on one another's flesh, fighting each other. He cowered on the ground, not sure what to do, when he heard a voice in his head. The voice was his own and it told him to pray to God. He screamed, I don't know how. Having never prayed before, it was not something he felt comfortable doing, but he was desperate to escape the place. He began to throw out phrases he had heard here and there. He shouted, Our Father who art in heaven, and one nation under God. He repeated these again and again. Suddenly, it worked. He was back in his body in the hospital bed. Since then, he questioned everything he had once known. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Trip to Hell. Dr. George Ritchie's experience happened in 1943 during World War II. He had temporarily passed due to pneumonia. He woke up in a hospital room. After noticing all of his belongings had gone, he decided to get up to look around. As soon as he stood up, he noticed that someone was lying in his bed. He did think this was odd as he had just gotten out of bed, but instead of wondering what was going on, he decided to leave. He wanted to get home. He stepped out into the hallway and out of the metal doors. Even though his home was miles 
miles away from where he was in the hospital, he decided to run back to his hometown. Again, in a strange way that he didn't think about at the time, he was there within minutes, faster than any train, plane or car would be able to carry him. On his way, he happened upon a small town with a decrepit red cafe. At this point, the doctor had not even considered that he had died or that all of these events were very strange. While looking up at the cafe from the path, a man crossed his path. He shouted over to him, but the man didn't respond. He didn't even glance over, it was like he didn't hear him at all. The doctor went over to tap him on the shoulder. His hand fell right through the body like he was made of nothing but air. In this moment, his whole life flashed before his eyes and he realized it was his body lying in the hospital bed. He turned back around as fast as he could back to the hospital. Once there, he found his room, looked over his body. It was then a dark figure appeared to him. He felt like he had to go with him, even though he knew he didn't want to. He was not taken straight to hell, but rather shown different versions of it. He was asked to choose his hell. The first looked just like Earth. The living and dead lived side by side. Only the living didn't know the dead were there, and they couldn't interact with anything in the world. He saw a bar where people were having drinks, and the dead were desperately trying to grab something to drink. But they weren't able to. It seems these souls will live forever being unable to grasp the things they once loved. The next was like nothing he had seen. It was a large desolate plain. It looked like the souls here were fighting over what little they had. They seemed angry and alone. He knew he didn't want to be in this place either. As he was confronted with his choice, he suddenly woke up. He told people of what he had seen trying to make sense of what happened. He was scared he would one day have to make that final choice and still he didn't know which one was worse. Number 5 on this list is Victoria Gallant. This is a story from a reddit user who had a very close near death experience. Victoria who was living in a small town called Hammark at the time was going on a walk through nature. She was passing by a pond when she saw what looked to be a duck struggling in the water. Its wing was beaten and bloodied and it was drowning. Something came over her and she says that she felt she needed to help it. She tried to grab a long branch and reach out to it so it could have something to grab onto, but as she was reaching out though, she slipped and hit the back of her head on the rock she was standing on, knocking her completely unconscious. What followed is one of the weirdest descriptions of hell that I've ever read. She says that it felt as if she was in an experimental film. An indie project with no script or storyline to go off of, just weird images flying on the screen. Nothing made sense in this hell dimension that she was in, but she knew that it wasn't safe. Rather than have one god stare down on her, she said that there were many. Massive gods too, who were so tall that they might not have been able to see their own feet. She was falling this entire time before she was finally caught by something thick and silky. A massive spider web. She was stuck now and couldn't move if she wanted to. In front of her was this half spider, half human, demon looking thing looking as if Victoria was about to be its next meal. Before the spider could pounce though, a light appeared in the distance and she woke up. This has been a life changing event for her and after some deep therapy getting over her newfound fear of spiders, has actually helped her enjoy her day to day experiences a little bit more. She kept stressing in her post that there was no story, no narrative in this weird world. Nothing made sense at all and everything felt out of sorts. This is super different from our classic fiery hell universe with demons and honestly it's a little bit more scary. I personally can't imagine how it would have been to be part of something like that and just have no idea what's happening ever. One positive from this story though is that apparently the duck she was trying to save did eventually get to safety. So. At least we can hold on to that, guys. Number four on this list is Ian McCormick. Ian McCormick thought it was over for him. The doctors thought it was over for him. Any expert on his injuries would have thought it would have been over for him, but it wasn't. Ian got stung by a very deadly jellyfish that sent him to the emergency room. He got there late though and it looked as if he wasn't going to make it. He lost consciousness and said that he went somewhere he didn't expect. You see, it wasn't just black for Ian as some people report when they visit the other side. There was a bit more. He's quoted saying that there was something else there. I could feel a cold, eerie feeling as though something or someone was looking at me. He doesn't know what that thing was, but believes in his heart it was evil, whatever it could have been. He was in this dark, scary void for what felt like an eternity and kept praying to get out of it. He said that he prayed to God and God answered those prayers. While he was down there, a bright light illuminated the entire void he was in and filled him with warmth. Then a hand, shrouded in light, reached out and 
Gordon grabbed his arm and pulled him back from the dead. This is how he described it and apparently it was such a harrowing journey that he's dedicated his entire life afterwards to informing people about this tale and guiding them to God. I personally find it really interesting that hell for Ian as he describes it was a dark void filled with cold. It kind of reminds me of what space would be like if you had a massive unknown entity just watching you and stalking your every movement. If that is truly what hell is then that's almost more scary than the fiery demon city that we always picture. At least if you were in that fire land there would be others there with you as well. But can you imagine just floating around this dark, cold, empty void for eternity all by yourself? That might be the worst punishment imaginable and I can totally understand how coming back from that would change your life forever. Number three on this list is Jennifer Perez. Jennifer's story is really unique because in her experience she saw what both sides are like. Answers writes, Jennifer Perez was another young Christian who had a shocking experience with hell while she slipped in and out of consciousness. Unlike Bill Wise and Kenneth Hagen, Jennifer was first led to heaven and then to hell. She recalls finding herself standing ashamed in front of God. She acknowledged the fact that although she claimed to be a Christian, she failed to show the fruit of her faith. After this interaction, Jennifer recalls the feeling of falling. As she continued to fall, she felt her surroundings becoming hotter and hotter. She felt an unquenchable thirst as she smelled the intense smell of sulfur. Many of the other things she shares in her accounts are similar to others including torture, demons, screams of agony. Fortunately, Jennifer's life was spared and she went on to share her story in hopes of warning individuals who were lost or had grown lukewarm in their faith. Wow, I cannot even imagine the feeling of falling into hell as you literally watch your life slip away from you like that. Jennifer's description of hell is very much like the classic storybook definition. Red fire everywhere, demons flying around, those who were unworthy to go to heaven getting punished for the sins they committed while they were alive. Obviously not the ideal spot to spend the remainder of your existence. The story doesn't say how she got spared, if she was just falling and then woke up coming back to life, but I think it's really interesting how she almost got into heaven and then was turned away. No wonder she's dedicated the rest of her life to restoring her faith in God and in others. Number two on this list is Tamara LaRue. At the young age of 15, Tamara LaRue attempted to take her own life. She felt herself leave her body as she fell at an unstoppable speed and remembers entering a space of darkness with absolutely no light. She saw a fiery pit as she took in her surroundings, screaming in complete agony. Tamara remembers seeing thousands of others around her, yet feeling a sense of total isolation. Miraculously, Tamara felt a bright hand carry her up to heaven, after which she found herself back in her home. She survived her attempt to take her own life in what the doctors could only describe as a miracle and has spent the remainder of her life teaching people about the reality of hell. That was a passage from answers detailing Tamara's account with hell. I found another story detailing her account with death as well and it describes how she saw hundreds of souls screaming and crying out in agony for help. Imagine how horrible that must have been. To be stuck in hell crying out for eternity for somebody to save you or just end your suffering. It's no wonder that Tamara has written two books talking about this experience and the blessing that is our lives. Moral of this story and other ones guys is that enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow, and pretty much all the days that you have in your life because one day we could end up there. And finally number one on this list is Howard Storm. Wikipedia writes, in June 1985 Storm took a group of his students on a field trip to Europe. After returning to his Paris hotel room with his wife around 11 a.m. from a morning excursion, he had a sudden onset of severe abdominal pain. He was evaluated at the Paris hospital and diagnosed with a duodenal perforation, which required surgery. The earliest a surgeon could perform this procedure was around 9 p.m. that day. As he lay waiting for surgery, he truly believed that he was going to die due to the severity of his pain and so mentally prepared himself for death. After saying goodbye to his wife, he eventually passed out. Storm reports the following subconscious experience. He opened his eyes and found himself standing outside of his body, looking down at the hospital bed with his wife crying beside him. He was without pain and hypersensitive. His wife could not see or hear him. He was then 
drawn by voices calling his name outside the hospital room and he followed them believing they were taking him to a doctor. He describes pale humanoid creatures that urged him down the hallway saying they had been waiting for him. The creatures became increasingly hostile and when he refused to continue following them, they began to attack him. He then heard a voice saying, pray to God and so he recited fragments of Bible verses and the Pledge of Allegiance. With the mention of the word God, the creatures would retract and eventually he was alone again. After a period of time, he called out for Jesus to save him and suddenly was rescued by spiritual beings of light. Pale humanoid hostile figures. This sounds a lot like Howard was on his way to hell and seeing what I can only imagine are a form of demon. Some other reports of his experience talk about how he started to feel horrible pain all over his body. It felt as if there was going to be endless torment coming and that there was no escape. This experience was enough to turn Howard into a devout Catholic from an atheist. Apparently, he believes God was the only thing that saved him from currently being in this demonic hell. Number five on this list is Howard Storm. Storm was a strict atheist before his near-death experience that changed pretty immediately afterwards. In 1985, he took a group of students, as he was a teacher, on a school trip to Europe. During the trip, he had some serious and sudden abdominal pain and had to go to the hospital. It was determined that surgery was required to save his life. He truly believed as he was lying there waiting for surgery that he was going to die. That's how bad the pain was. As he was waiting, he passed out and that's when he saw what he thinks was hell. Storm reports the following subconscious experience. He opened his eyes and found himself standing outside of his body, looking down at the hospital bed with his wife crying beside him. He was without pain and hypersensitive. His wife could not see or hear him. He was then drawn by voices calling his name outside the hospital room and he followed them believing they were taking him to a doctor. He describes pale humanoid creatures that urged him down the hallway saying that they had been waiting for him. The creatures became increasingly hostile and when he refused to continue following them, they began to attack him. He then heard a voice saying, pray to God and so he recited fragments of Bible verses and the Pledge of Allegiance. With the mention of the word God, the creatures would retract and eventually he was alone again. Kinda sounds like he went to the other side or something. A world that's like our world, but it's twisted and not the same. I really hope that what he saw isn't hell, cause that would suck if that's actually what it's like. Number four on this list is Ian McCormick. Ian's experience with hell was truly electrifying. That's a pun, actually, but I guess you don't really get that yet because I haven't told you how he got to hell. Well, Answers for Everyone says, Ian McCormack's near-death experience in hell began with an encounter with a deadly jellyfish. So, you know, electrifying. Ah, whatever. Upon arriving at the hospital, Ian was pronounced dead as the hospital failed to find a pulse. He describes his brief encounter with hell as more than physical darkness, there was something else there. I could feel a cold, eerie feeling as though something or someone was looking at me. Ian McCormick prayed in desperation and he was saved from the darkness by a bright light. He believes that God allowed him to decide whether he would return to earth or enter heaven. Ian wished to return to earth to share his story with those who did not know God. In a truly miraculous healing, Ian left the hospital the day following his tragic accident. He proceeded to read the entire Bible in the six weeks following this experience. I wonder who that someone was that was looking at him. Was it the devil? Was it God? Was it a creature that resides in hell that we just don't even know about yet? That's something to consider that I think we often overlook. A lot of people just kind of assume that we know everything that there is to know about heaven and hell, but we have so few first-hand encounters and they're all pretty foggy. Like what if there is a creature or a demon or an entity down there that we haven't even discovered yet? I would wager a bet that that's honestly pretty likely. Like think about the fact that most of us consider hell to be a fiery and burning hot place with the overwhelming smell of sulfur. That's not at all what Ian saw. Ian saw a black empty nothingness. Maybe even scarier than what we currently think hell is. I can't imagine just floating in the dark all the time, constantly. Hopefully this isn't the reality of what it is. Or honestly, even better than that, hopefully we all just don't go to hell in the first place. Number three on this list is Reverend Kenneth Hagen. The Reverend experienced hell at one of the youngest ages out of everybody, kind of setting the table for his whole life. Answers for Everyone says, Born and raised in a Christian family, Reverend Kenneth Hagen experienced hell at the age of 15 in a near-death experience resulting from a chronic heart condition. In his book titled I Believe in Visions, Reverend Hagen shares his experience with hell. Unlike Bill Wise, Kenneth Hagen's experience began when his heart ceased to beat. 
He recalls the feeling of numbness spreading throughout his body. In his book, he recounts his experiences as follows. I began to descend down, down into a pit, like you'd go down into a well, cavern, or cave. And I continued to descend. I went down feet first. I could look up and see the lights of the earth. They finally faded away. Darkness encompassed me round about darkness that is blacker than any night man has ever seen. Reverend Hagen shares many descriptions of hell similar to others including intense darkness, unbearable heat, strange creatures, and great flames of fire. Fortunately for Kenneth, his doctors were able to save him from seemingly inevitable death. He continued to serve God in his adult years, pastoring Rima Bible Church and founding Kenneth Hagen Ministries. Yeah, I mean if that happened to me at the age of 15 then I'd probably serve God for the rest of my life as well. Darkness, heat, demons, fire. This sucks, dude. I keep waiting for somebody to visit hell and be like, nah, guys, don't worry, it's all good. We got pools and pina coladas and flowers and stuff. I might have to keep waiting though, because everybody on this list doesn't seem like they want to tell me that. Number two on this list is Matthew Botsford. Matthew is a unique case when it comes to visiting hell, and you'll understand what I mean in a second. Answers for Everybody says, Unlike the other people we mentioned, Matthew Botsford was far from Christianity when he had his near-death experience in hell. After Matthew was shot in the head, doctors decided to put him in a medically induced coma to save his life. This coma lasted 27 days. Matthew describes his experience immediately following being shot in the following way. Utter blackness. Incredible fear. I went to a place that I believe was hell. It was void of anything good, beyond anything any words could describe. In his experience, he remembers terrifying creatures, torment, and profound isolation. While it was not immediate, Matthew eventually recovered and gave his life over to God. Wow, as if 27 days in a coma wasn't bad enough, but you also have to spend some of that time in hell as well. Incredible fear is what he says. I wonder if it was induced by someone or something, or if that was just the sensation that he got at all times. Hell seems like the type of place that would just elicit that type of sensation from people, even if nothing bad was coming after you. And finally, number one on this list is Bill Wise. Bill's story might be the most famous out of all of them when it comes to visiting hell. Answers for Everyone says, On a November morning in 1998, Bill Wise, author of 23 Minutes in Hell, had an experience that would forever alter the course of his life. In an event that he relates to a vision, Bill Wise, a devout Christian, describes his experience as being plunged into hell. In his book, 23 Minutes in Hell, Bill describes many horrifying sights, smells, and sounds. After what felt like falling down a long tunnel, Bill found himself in a dark, dirty prison. Many people wonder if hell is hot or cold. He shares that he experienced an intense heat that seemed too hot for life to even survive. While in this foul prison-like cell, Bill realized two large creatures shared the cell with him. During his time in hell, which lasted exactly 23 minutes, Bill experienced a great number of horrors including torture, intense darkness, a raging pit of fire, screaming, foul odors, and varying levels of torment. Suddenly, Bill recalls seeing a bright light and felt himself rising out of the tunnel though, which he had previously descended. Following his vision, Bill knew his life calling was to share his experience with the world. After sharing his experience with anyone who would listen, he recorded the entire saga in his first book, 23 Minutes in Hell. 23 minutes, dude, in literal hell. That would actually suck. You can check it out by reading a story if you want. I warn you though, it is a harrowing tale, and if you're already scared of hell, then this will just push that even further. Coming in at number 5 we have Don Piper. Don Piper died on January 18th 1989 and to his knowledge went to heaven. The pastor from Texas attended a pastors conference that Wednesday in January. Within minutes of leaving the retreat center Don drove onto a bridge spanning a lake. It was a fairly long bridge and there was water on both sides of the elevated highway. Don recalls approaching the end of the bridge and before reaching the end a tractor trailer collided with his car car head on. Not only did the truck hit Don's car, it ran over the passenger side of a small Ford Escort, completely crushing the vehicle and killing Don Piper. Instantly Don began an amazing journey. As for how Piper describes it, when he was killed, he was instantly transported to heaven's gates. Don found himself standing in front of a divine portal surrounded by familiar faces. Looking over the heads of his friends, Don saw a looming pearl gate. He describes his experience as being a 
magnificent edifice, and the gates of heaven look like it had been sculpted from mother of pearl. Behind that portal, Don recalls seeing a light so bright that you could not see it in an earthly body. It could only be envisioned in a heavenly body because it was too bright, Don suggests. While Don stood at the gates of heaven, Pastor Dick Wanrecker of Klein, Texas stood on a Texas highway by Don's lifeless body. He had also attended the pastor's conference. He came upon the accident moments after it happened. The EMS personnel had told him that Don was dead. Don was transported to Herman Hospital in Houston. Miraculously, he suffered no head or internal injuries. However, virtually every bone in Don's body was either broken or shattered. His left arm and leg were completely severed and had to be rebuilt and replaced. Looking at his battered and pain seared body, this man who had touched heaven's gates wanted to go back. But the prayers and love of family and friends pulled Don through four months of intensive therapy, numerous operations, and infections that on two occasions almost claimed his life. Coming in at number four, we have Julie Papavis. As Julie Papavis was driving away from a shopping mall, a teen driver ran a red light, causing an accident where the teen driver ran into her at 50 miles an hour. The impact of the accident left her neck and head injured, and Julie was between life and death. Once rushed to the hospital, she was left unconscious and unresponsive, with brain scans showing no brain functions. Doctors were not hopeful for her situation. Julie remained unresponsive in a coma. While in the coma, Julie had been given a glimpse of heaven. She described it as being so so vast that there was no real beginning or end to it. It was just perfect peace. She knew that she was there in that place and that she was dead. Even though she knew that she passed, Julie was not afraid to be there. She was actually happy. It felt like home to her, and Julie wanted to stay there. Julie also recalls seeing her deceased grandmother suddenly standing with her. One of her grandmas apparently told her that she cannot join them just yet and that she needs to go back. Julie reasons that she couldn't go back as she wasn't physically well. Though her her grandmother responded back by telling her that her body will heal and that she needs to go back and be happy. Then Julie's next memory is waking up in the rehab hospital. After several weeks of being left in a coma, the hospital staff gave no hope of recovery and urged her parents to release her to a nursing home. Though to the astonishment of the doctors, six weeks after the accident, Julie woke up. After two months of physical therapy, feeling and movement slowly returned to her left side. Her progress was nothing short of miraculous, as doctors believed that with her type of injury, she had a 4% chance of surviving. Julie progressed so well that in 2007, 10 years after the accident, she trained for and finished an indoor triathlon. In at number three, we have Mary Neal. Mary Neal was an orthopedic surgeon residing in Jackson Hole, New York. On her day off, she found herself in a terrible kayaking accident in 1999. Mary was pinned underwater and was underwater for 30 minutes before being rescued. Due to being underwater for 30 minutes, Mary died due to drowning. During the half hour that she was submerged, Neil claimed she looked down on her body from a vantage point above it and felt herself travel to a place that she describes as heaven, where she encountered spirits of her departed ancestors and time seemed to slow down. There, the spirits informed her that her son would die, although they didn't say when or how. In 2009, her older son, Willie, was hit by a car and killed at the age of 20. But after being resuscitated, Neil miraculously survived the ordeal, telling her fellow kayakers that she had been to heaven. As Mary describes it, she felt her spirit peeling away from her body and going up towards the heavens. While there, she was instantly greeted by a group of beings, though not knowing what to call them. Though she didn't recognize them, she believes that they had been important in her life somehow. Mary recalls the group being overjoyed to welcome her and greet her with warmth and love. What she describes as her near-death experience was an absolute shift in time time and dimension, as she experienced all of eternity in every second. Mary reports being able to look down upon her body and not wanting to go back to it, as it was bloated and purple with fixed eyes. There was no doubt to her that she wasn't physically dead. Though to everyone's surprise, after being rescued by a friend, she woke up. Neil suffered multiple broken bones, and the group was far from help, but in an inexplicable coincidence, the group found an ambulance parked nearby on a dirt road and was rushed to the hospital. After Mary was hospitalized for more than a month as she underwent multiple operations. Miraculously, she made a full recovery. Neil, being a doctor herself, she wouldn't even believe.
believe her own story if it didn't happen to her. Now, Neil, now 62, recalled watching her fellow kayakers from above as they attempted to resuscitate her. In at number two, we have Eben Alexander. The neurosurgeon Dr. Eben Alexander fell into a deep coma in 2008. The coma was due to a bacterial meningitis and from a harsh strain of E. coli. After being in the coma for a week, his doctors gave him a survival rate well below 10%. Additionally, if he did beat all odds and wake up, he would be in a nursing home for the rest of his life. Though by surprise, not only did he make a full and miraculous recovery, but he recounted an incredibly deep and profound near-death experience during his time in this coma. During his near-death experience, Eben entered what he thought of as heaven. Eben began a spiritual journey that took him to three destinations. The first place was a dark, jello-like, red-brown mud pool with rhythmic pounding sound that he calls the realm of the earthworm's eye. The second, which he calls the gateway, featured a bright light, captivating music, and along with an angel guide, which he described her as a beautiful woman with blue eyes and golden brown hair. Here he found himself in clouds flying over trees, fields, streams, waterfalls and people. The third place that he recalls visiting in the afterlife was a place that he calls the core. This place was the culmination of his journey. In the core, Alexander reports an orb-like ball of light as he encountered God, the all-powerful, all-loving and all-knowing creator, who gave him a message. The message that Alexander reported receiving from God was that God loved him unconditionally. Evil is necessary on earth because without it, human free will is impossible. And lastly, love will triumph over evil. Alexander then woke up, defying odds of almost certain death. He opened his eyes back in Lynchburg General Hospital. As a neurosurgeon, he had heard stories from patients about their own NDEs, which he had casually dismissed as hallucinations, never taking the time to entertain or explore what his patients recounted or what it could possibly mean. This is until he had an NDE himself. And finally, in a number one, we have Tracy Morgan. You may recognize Tracy for his roles in Cop Out, The Other Guy, Sunny with a Chance of Meatballs, and his countless years on Saturday Night Live, but he isn't on this list for his comedy or acting abilities. He's on here as he had his own near-death experience. The star got into an accident in June of 2014, where he was rear-ended by a tractor-trailer on his way home from a comedy show. Tracy and two other passengers were severely injured, while comedian James McNair wasn't as lucky and lost his life in the collision. Tracy suffered from head trauma, broken bones, and was stuck in a coma for two weeks. During an exclusive interview with Oprah, Tracy described his NDE during the interview. He recalls talking to his father, who had passed away in 1987. His father reportedly told him it was not his time to die, and that he still had to finish the job. During the interview, he stated that his life had been transformed because of that very moment. The actor said he truly believes he was in heaven, and that his late father, who died when Tracy was just 19, encouraged him to return to the living world. <laughs> 